Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog. And as you can see, my place is starting to look uh, bare. Uh, I'm already patching holes up on the walls and I'm getting rid of everything. Behind this camera here is basically my entire apartment in bins and boxes all kind of stacked up right behind this camera. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, because I got a very small room. So I can't wait to move to this apartment in Florida, which is, uh, I have, I'm have i in a two bedroom right now, but really my only living space is this bedroom. I have I don't really go out into the living room that much or, or do too much out there. So I kind of just have everything in this one small room. Now I'm about to go to an apartment that's twice the size of this entire two bedroom apartment, uh, which is crazy. Uh, that's freaking awesome. And I can't thank you guys enough for the support and wishing me well and keeping your fingers crossed for me that I was able to get approved with my credit. And luckily I was able to, um, and that was fantastic. Uh, you know, being able to get this apartment was awesome. Uh, they did ask for a co-signer from my mom because basically I don't have a job and I don't plan on working anytime soon. So they're like, hey, if you're, you know, we, not under we understand you have the money to live here, but since you don't have a job and an income, Per our policy, you have to have a cosigner. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. You know, luckily my mom was able to do it and we got approved. And so everything is good. So now I'm going to be leaving in a few days uh, across country. Uh, you know, I'm going to leave on Monday. And I, right now, as I'm recording this, it's Wednesday. So I have about four or five days left. And I got a lot of stuff I got to do. So I'm going to try to, these are going to be my last episodes. This one, the next episode, and the one after that, I think three more Venom vlogs. And that's all you're going to get, unfortunately, until I get to Florida and I get set up and everything. So, uh, so yeah, I'm so sorry about that. I was hoping to get a few more episodes out before then uh but uh, you know i'm doing what i can with all the other stuff i got going on and moving and saying goodbye to some friends uh quarantining you know mainly i've been trying to you know do that and stay inside and pack and stuff uh so yeah it's it's a lot to deal with so i appreciate your patience and i appreciate you guys supporting me and everything it it does mean a lot and thanks for all the well wishes and everything online and the congratulations when i got the apartment all of you guys were have been really awesome so thank you so much um so we do have more of anti-venom stuff we have this episode and the next one and these are great stories this one it kind of is a it took place in Amazing Spider-Man. So, I, you know, when this came out, I didn't miss it. I actually read this storyline. Uh, but the next episode we do uh, in the, you know, the next one we're going to do is going to be about the Revengers. And it takes place over the course of two Avenger annual books uh, written by Brian Michael Bendis. And they feature anti-venom in them. And I've never read them before. I had no idea those existed until maybe a couple months ago. Uh, so, uh, so I, you know, downloaded them off Comixology. And we'll talk about those in the next episode. There's not a lot, so it might be a short episode because there's not a lot of Venom and Eddie Brock in it. But still, it'll be fun, and we'll talk about that in the next episode. Uh, then there's also a short story called Crossroads that is found in this trade paperback that we're going to talk about today, which is called The Return of Anti-Venom. And it has in the trade paperback Amazing Spider-Man's issue 663, 664, and 665. And the, the story we're going to talk about today is only two issues. It's 663 and 664. Uh, issue 665 has a short story in it called Crossroads that kind of deals with uh, Betty Brant and Flash Thompson uh, in the aftermath of her getting injured when Spider-Man saved her. And so we're going to de we'll deal with that in an upcoming episode. We're going to do a Flash, another Agent Venom episode uh, before we get to Spider Island. And again, Spider Island, that's going to be a storyline that we talk about uh, probably when I get to Florida. So uh, so today, yeah, we're just going to cover Amazing Spider-Man 663 and 664. Like I said, you can find it in a trade called Return of Anti-Venom. And it's written by Dan Slott and drawn by Giuseppe um, Kamakoli. And I, I hopefully I'm not butchering. I'm pr pretty sure I'm butchering uh, Giuseppe's last name. So I, I apologize, Giuseppe. Uh, but Giuseppe's art is fantastic. And I, I love the look of these two issues. Really great stuff. Really clean lines. I really like his, uh, his framework, uh, facial framework. Although there's some similarities like between characters like a lot of people have similar you know frameworks on their faces uh, but the lines are really clean and the colors really pop and help make it work so uh, I think overall I kind of gave it a little bit of a pass uh, where I would normally be a little bit harsher on that uh, critiquing wise uh, but I liked how everything looked and so it kind of was like oh, okay I can't be mad at this it looks good so uh, and, and Dan Slott wrote a, a good two issues so you know obviously we've been talking about this season that Flash Thompson has become Agent Venom now and he's working for the government and he's with Betty Brandt and they have their drama and their life going on. And then you have Eddie Brock, you know, during the brand new day Spider-Man storyline, which was called a uh, new ways to die. You had Eddie Brock uh, get turned into anti-venom by a villain named Mr. Negative, who is also known as Martin Lee. And recently we learned that Eddie Brock has discovered that Martin Lee is actually uh, Mr. Negative. He found that out in a storyline we covered recently called Black and White. And so now Eddie's like trying to tell people. And of course he's like, well, no one's going to believe me. I'm Eddie Brock. I'm the guy who you know, try to, you know, help solve the murder of Gene DeWolf by writing the story about the Sin Eater. And then I got my facts wrong and that 
blew up in my face and it ruined my career and ruined my life. And it led me to a church where I prayed uh, for forgiveness from God because I was planning on killing myself. And then I became venom on that fateful night. So he's like, but that, but I'm known for being a liar. That's what everyone thinks I am, even though I really try to tell the truth and I try to you get my facts straight. And, uh, and so he's like, so no one's going to believe me that Martin Lee is Mr. Negative. So we have Eddie Brock going through that. And we have Spider-Man going through kind of a, you know, a change in his life because after he undid his marriage with Mary Jane, making a deal with Mephisto and everything, uh, now this is what Brand New Day is. It's like Spider-Man in a new environment, new friends in his life. He works at a place called Horizon Labs where he's kind of like a lab assistant. In this book, he gets his first like uh, paper, science paper published. So he's kind of a big deal for him. And Aunt May is really proud of him. So she's out at Feast, which is the, uh, you know, the shelter that feeds homeless people um that's run by martin lee you know mr negative and of course nobody knows he's mr negative so uh so aunt may works for him and she recently just got married to j jonah jameson's father so now she's may jameson <laughs> which has just caused a lot of problems in peter's life and uh and so she's there you know passing out these you know these uh papers she went and bought a bunch of uh, copies of the magazine that peter was published in and she's really proud and she's passing them out to people at feast uh it's because obviously she's proud of her nephew and then all, and then in peter's life though he's dating a forensic scientist a uh, forensic officer named carly cooper and she's out there you know solving crimes almost like barry allen is in flash in the dc universe where she goes to crime scenes and looks at evidence and stuff like that and she's really smart and she's starting to to deduce that maybe peter parker has a connection to spider-man and so that's causing problems in his life and then also there's some secrets that um this new captain who is part of the police force has shown up and her name is yuri watanabe which if you play the playstation spider-man game you'll know that name because she pops up in that game a lot uh because she's like a recurring character that helps Spider-Man. Well, in this comic, she pops up a couple times and she has a very deep connection to Spider-Man lore and Spider-Man history. And uh, But she has some secrets she's hiding too. So a lot of things are going on in Spider-Man's life. And it's, it's uh, really, you know, the brand new day stuff, I, I kind of railed against at first because I was kind of like, I was just more mad at how they got rid of Mary Jane. I was more wishing they just had them get divorced. I'm like, yeah, just have them get divorced. And I think someone at Marvel said, no, they can't because that ages them. It makes them, and it's like, no way, like 22 year olds get divorced. <laughs> you know, it's like, so uh, I don't know, just weird rationale sometimes from editors and, and corporate people. They just have weird ideas sometimes. Um, so anyway, but past that, Brand New Day was kind of interesting. And they had different writers like Dan Slott and Mark Guggenheim and, and Zeb Wells and these writers who were really solid. And I actually really liked a lot of the stories that came out of Brand New Day, um, even though I kind of railed against it at first. But this, these two issues are, are really solid. And they kind of focus on Eddie Brock trying to, you know, figure out his life, I guess. Like the book opens up, he takes down all these bad guys. And, uh, and then once he... Um, takes him down he sees that this uh, criminal or this uh, vigilante i guess named wraith has shown up and wraith is helping eddie or not helping directly but like fighting criminals over here and eddie's f fighting criminals over here and then eddie comes over and sees wraith and right as wraith is like grabbing the the mob boss that she wants to you know get her get her hands on and she turns around and her mask is up and she reveals that her identity is Jean de wolf brought back from the dead and eddie is blown away by this he's like wait no, because obviously that ties to him. Uh, that's, you know, he was covering that story about her death with the Sin Eater. So he's like, no way. There's no way he could still be alive. And almost like the Phantasm from, Mar you know, Mask of the Phantasm from Batman, she, you know, whisks away. She like, you know, smoke comes out of her and she dips into the smoke and vanishes. And Eddie's like, great. So now no one's going to believe me about Martin Lee. And now who am I going to tell that Gene DeWolf is still alive? Um, so, uh, so that was a great opening. I really caught me and you know pulled me into the storyline and then from there like i said yet uh peter get published aunt may's out passing stuff out uh very proud of him but then she like blacks out she like you know has a moment because eddie brock runs into her and he's like hey you know i heard you got married and she's like yes i have and i you know and what's this that you're handing out she's oh my nephew peter you know he got published and so eddie's kind of like okay you know of course he doesn't really like peter too much but he's just like but he doesn't remember peter as spider-man through all this because of um the deal that Spider-Man made with Mephisto was that anyone who's ever known Peter Parker as Spider-Man now forgets. That was part of the deal. So now his identity is hidden again. And the only person that knows, I think, is Doctor Strange and then Peter Parker. And that's kind of it. Um, so uh, so that's the kind of the storyline going on. So, you know, he has, you know, Eddie doesn't remember that Peter Spider-Man, but Eddie does remember Aunt May. And he remembers that he almost, you know, took her life in the hospital. And ever since then, he's volunteered at this shelter and he's kind of grown to like her as a person. 
and it feels protective of her. And so uh, he's like, hey, that's, you know, great. I'm glad your nephew's doing well. I'm glad you're doing well. Congratulations on being married. Sorry, I haven't been around for a while. Um, but I'm here to help out today. Have you seen Martin Lee at all? And she's like, yeah, he's in his office. You know, he's right over there. And so, you know, Venom, our Auntie Venom's looking over and he sees the office and he's starting to, you know, uh, sense, you know, Martin Lee's presence in there. And uh, then Martin Lee does come out and he's talking to everybody. He's like, hey, congrats, Aunt, you know, May with your nephew and all that. And he goes, uh, you know, I always knew he was a smart kid. And then she, he like puts his hand on her shoulder and she remembers that recently she also discovered that Martin Lee was Mr. Negative, but, uh, you know, she caught him in the act, like transforming in the office uh, late, late one night or something. And so he like erased her memory uh, from it. He kind of gave her like a, you know, a, um, like a, a spell, like, a, you know, like an Alzheimer's type spell and kind of triggered one in her head using his like negative effects on his abilities. And so that moment came back up and it causes her to faint because it's an overwhelming sense to have this memory that was forced out rush back into her mind. And so she kind of collapses and she has to be rushed to the hospital. So, of course, while that's happening, um, J. John Jameson's grand, you know, father, uh, you know, he's John Jameson's grandfather, I guess, but J. John Jameson's father, who's married to May now, uh, he is on the phone with Peter when this happens. And he's like, Peter, get over here. We're going to take your Aunt May to the hospital. She just passed out. So Peter's like, I'm on my way. So that's how Peter kind of gets involved in the story. But as Peter is heading towards Feast to see if he can kind of catch them while they're there so he can ride over in the ambulance with Aunt May, that's when Eddie sees that Aunt May got hurt. He blames Martin Lee for it. So as Martin Lee is being taken out the back door by his, you know, his crew, I guess, um, he's, you know, on the verge of transforming into Mr. Negative, Venom or Anti-Venom goes and attacks him. Eddie Brock is out there on the street. And he's like, no, he just hurt that poor woman. I, I vowed to protect her while I'm here. And he just hurt her right in front of me. I got to do something about this before he hurts somebody else. And so he turns into anti-venom and he goes and he attacks Martin Lee. And he's like, rig, jumps on his limousine. He rips the, you know, the hood open of the car and he reaches in. He's trying to, you know, get him and, and kill him basically. Uh, but then Spider-Man shows up and kicks, you know, Eddie to the side. And he's like, what are you doing? That's Martin Lee. He's a hero of this town. And Eddie's like, no, you're mistaken. He goes, that guy's a monster. And he's like, you're, you're fighting me, but that's the real monster. And uh, Spider-Man's like, yeah, okay, Eddie, sure. He goes, I think you've been taking some crazy pills again. And he's like, no, he's like, I knew no one would believe me. So he webs Spider-Man up and uh, beats the crap out of him, actually. He actually gets the upper hand on Spider-Man and then brings him to, like, a location. And he says, look, you're going to stay here, and I'm going to go get proof that Martin Lee is actually Mr. Negative. So Eddie goes out and he, you know, he disguised himself as like a security guard. He's kind of following, uh, you know, Mr. Negative around or Martin Lee. Martin Lee goes and gives like a speech at one point and he's like, you know, uh, wants to check in on Aunt May, but obviously she's being, you know, held in the hospital on her own. Peter can't get there, obviously, because he's kind of webbed up. Anti-Venom shoots out like this weird, like white liquid stuff that like wraps around you. So it's almost like webbing, but it's like, I don't know, it's weird looking. And so Peter is trying to like, you know, he's being held in and he's trying to break free from it, but he can't, he can't get through. So, uh, so you know, that he's he's kind of bound right now. And while Aunt May is, you know, is, you know, wondering where he is and, and while uh, her new husband is wondering where he is and uh, Jonah's like, you know, of course, like, where's that kid? He should be here, blah, blah, blah. So, of course, all that's going on. Carly Cooper is wondering where Peter is doing all this. Um, and But meanwhile, Carly's also working her own story. She's starting to figure out, because like I said, she's really smart. She's already started making a connection with Peter and Spider-Man. But now she's starting to make a connection of uh, Miss Watanabe, her new captain, and the, this new Wraith character, uh, who is apparently Jean DeWolf. So she's like, you know, Watanabe's been keeping secrets. Does she know about DeWolf still being alive? What's going on? So Carly's like investigating that storyline, or investigating that mystery. Uh, so that there's that story going on, and then there's the Peter story going on, and Anti-Venom. So Eddie Brock is kind of hanging out, and he looks over, and he sees Martin Lee, and he's being taken away, but he kind of sees, all right, this is, this is it. I know where he's going now because he's kind of, you know, Ed, Eddie has kind of disguised himself with the, the anti-venom suit that he wears. It kind of made him look like a security guard and he's kind of nearby and he overhears where Martin Lee is going to be next. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go get Spider-Man and I'm going to bring him to that location and he's going to see Martin Lee transform into Mr. Negative. Uh, and we're going to stop him, do this, you know, this drug deal or whatever, whatever this uh, deal he's going on. So he goes back to get Spider-Man and right when he gets there, Spider-Man finds some chemical, pours it on the, the webbing stuff, breaks free and he gets up. He's like, all right, Eddie, I'm coming after you. And then boom, he gets hit again. He gets webbed up again instantly. So I love that because there was like one panel of uh, Spider-Man triumphant, like, yes, I got out. And then boom, he's back to webbed up. And that, you know, Anti-Venom shows up and says, 
say, look, uh, you know, I got the evidence I need. I know where he's going to be. So you're coming with me, Spider-Man. So he grabs Spider-Man and they go out the window and they go try to find where Martin Lee is. And uh, so while they're doing that, Carly Cooper is also following Wraith, who is on to Martin Lee. And she's chasing him too. And she has like this tech that, you know, can scan things and, you know, upload things to the internet uh, from her helmet and all this stuff. And where that, all that tech comes from is actually police evidence lockers. Uh, so what happens is Carly Cooper realizes that the tech being used is like part Mysterio tech and it's part uh, original Wraith tech. Uh, and Wraith, I guess, was like somehow connected to Gene DeWolf originally. Um, so Carly sees that all this stuff was confiscated by the police and the only person that had been in that in that room in the past like week who uh, could have maybe pulled, you know, some of that stuff out of the, the you know, weapons locker and out of the, uh, you know, evidence locker uh, had, was actually uh, Watanabe, was Yuri Watanabe. So she's starting to connect that maybe Yuri is connected to this new Wraith character. So Carly, that leads her because she puts her cell phone on Watanabe as Watanabe is like, hey, I got to go investigate something. I got a tip somewhere. I'll be back later. So Carly Cooper puts her cell phone into Watanabe's like bag or something. And, uh, you know, without her knowing it, and then traces her phone and it leads her right to that warehouse. So Carly Cooper also ends up at this warehouse. So this is really good in just two issues. It has like these three separate stories going on and how they all culminate in this one location where uh, Martin Lee now is transformed into Mr. Negative and he's fighting anti-venom. He stabs him with his you know, negative sword, stabs into Eddie and he's like, you know, I know who you are, Eddie Brock. I, you know, I remember you because obviously they met in black and white and then also before that in the new, new Ways to Die. So he's like, you know, I know who you are. I know what you're after. And I tried to reason with you last time and, and team up with you to take down Norman Osborn, but you refused. So now here we are and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to kill you. And so meanwhile, you know, Eddie left Spider-Man in another room webbed up. And, uh, and that's when Wraith comes in and he's like, you know, please let me out of here. And she's like, yeah, I'm not here to hurt you, Spider-Man. I'm here to stop Mr. Negative. So uh, yeah, I'll let you out. So he, you know, he lets her out and, uh, you know, she lets him out and the two of them go and they set, you know, help anti-venom fight Mr. Negative. And as soon as they do, uh, Mr. Negative struggling with his transformation, and that's when Wraith is able to scan him and uh, take a full, you know, picture of his face, uh, both in human form and in Mr. Negative form, and do a side by side, and does a hundred percent match on his skin structure, his bone structure, and then she uploads that information to the internet, to the world, puts it out there, um, so that way now, now everybody in New York knows that Mr. Negative is actually Martin Lee, and when she does that. Uh, she says it out loud. She's like, yeah, I just proved that you're Martin Lee. And Spider-Man goes, wait, Eddie was right? And Eddie goes, yeah, told you, <laughs> you know? And so Eddie has like a nice, I told you so moment there. So at the end, of course, they defeat Martin Lee, but he escapes. He gets away with his inner demons, you know, crew and everything, and they escape. Uh, but then, you know, but his identity is revealed. He's now not, not going to be a threat anymore. And they show like Aunt May in the hospital seeing the news. They say, show J. Jonah Jameson uh, seeing the news and other people seeing the news, Carly Cooper seeing the news. So now everybody knows that he's Martin Lee. And uh, they're like, wow, what's going to happen to Feast? What's going to happen to this great thing that he was doing to help the homeless? Um, you know, and where, where is that going to go? So that kind of sets up a story for another trade, you know, trade later on, like another story later on for Spider-Man. Um, but, uh, but in this one, you know, they kind of wrap up with, you know, Peter talking to uh eddie and saying like hey look you know it looks like you weren't the bad guy here and i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't believe you he's like so you get a free pass man like i, I owe you and I, I feel bad you know i that i didn't trust you i know you're trying to turn over a new leaf but uh you know I, i'll back away so you can you're free to go and you know anti venom's like yeah thanks you know thanks for nothing chump and he like swings away uh then you know spider-man then goes and you know hides while carly cooper comes in and he witnesses carly cooper confront uh, Watanabe because now Wraith has disappeared and Watanabe is there and so Carly Cooper comes up and says look I know that you're Wraith and uh, he she says you know what Watanabe is like wait how, how do you what are you talking about how do you know that and she goes because and then she reveals how she figured it out look I'm a forensics officer I found out that gear was missing you're using a, a hologram like chameleon style like a facial uh, uh, mask to make yourself look like Gene DeWolf. You're using a tech from Mysterio to uh, disappear, you know, in a puff of smoke, um, you know, and I, I figured out how you're doing all this and you pulled all that from the evidence and weapons lockers at the, uh, you know, at our station. And so, uh, you know, Watanabe goes, fine. She goes, well, what are you gonna do? You're gonna turn me in like you turned in your partner when you found out he was, you know, dirty or whatever. And she goes, look, I'm not gonna turn you in Watanabe because I know you're doing the right thing and you haven't killed anybody. You're just stopping bad guys. Why are you doing it? And she goes, because I remember when Gene DeWolf died Died. It wasn't cops that, you know, uh, brought her, uh, you know, brought the sin eater to justice. It was Spider-Man. It was masked people and heroes 
who came together to, you know, to solve this crime, you know, daredevil and stuff like that. So she's like, it wasn't, it wasn't us. We didn't do it. She goes, so I wanted to walk in their shoes and I wanted to, uh, you know, cut some corners, I guess, and, and crack down on some of these guys that, w that I knew were bad. And Carly's like, that's great, but eventually you're going to make a mistake and you're going to go too far. And she's like, our job is to be police officers and to abide by the law. So you got to stop doing it. So maybe Wraith can say, take some time off now that she's, you know, accomplished a mission and she revealed Martin Lee as Mr. Negative. Like maybe he, she can, the, the Wraith can go away for a while and you can just be a cop for a while. And Watanabe's like, you know what, I'll make that deal with you, Cooper. So the two of them kind of agree to, you know, and shake hands and, and walk off. Spider-Man seeing all this, he's like, holy crap, you know, like, and he goes, and my girlfriend is smart and eventually she's going to find out that I am Spider-Man. So I better be up front with her. So at the end of the book, Spider-Man does talk or Peter Parker does talk with Carly and he says, look, there is a connection between me and Spider-Man. I make his tech. And she goes, I knew it. And he goes, oh, you didn't think I was Spider-Man? She goes, what? No way. You're not Spider-Man. You're too much of a weirdo nerd. Uh, she goes, but I love you, honey, for that. But but you're not Spider-Man. She goes, but you building his tech and making his weapons, that makes a lot of sense. And, he, and she goes, so, okay. So she kind of now dies down from her investigation into her own boyfriend. Uh, so yeah, just, it's fun stuff. I mean, I liked it overall. And Eddie does have a great, uh, you know, solid through line in this storyline. It's not, it's not as good as maybe the other stories. It wasn't as fun as like New Ways to Live, for example. And I didn't think it was as, uh, you know, like clear cut as Black and White was because I really like that story. But this one is not too bad. It's a nice two issue story arc and you get some anti-venom in it and you get to see him using his powers and everything. And it, it's really nice. And it is setting him up for Spider Island. So, you know, for that storyline, I would say if you need, if you want Eddie stuff for your collection, you might want to get this because Spider Island is a big moment for Eddie. And some of these stories that we're talking about now are kind of setting that up. So you kind of want that whole arc for, you know, anti-venom uh, leading into the big Spider Island storyline, which we will do an episode on. Like I said, that'll be a very long episode we'll do. And we'll do it when I get to Florida, uh, you know, probably after I settle in. And we'll do it sometime in, in April before Maximum Venom starts, the cartoon starts. We'll try to get it in before that. So, uh, yeah, let me know. What do you think of this? Have you read the story yourself? If you have, let me know your thoughts down below. And if you haven't and you watch my video, that's great. I appreciate you, you know, listening to me basically spoiling and discussing everything. But please go check these issues out yourself. Amazing Spider-Man 663 and 664. You can get them on Comixology uh, right now if you'd like, or you can find them online somewhere, I'm sure. Or they're in a trade paperback called uh, The Return of Anti-Venom. And you can pick that up as well on Comixology or some, I don't know if it's still in print, but you could probably still find a copy online. And there is, like I said, there's three issues in this book, but we only talked about two today. The third issue we're going to save for our next Agent Venom episode, which is going to be two episodes from now. So make sure you stay subscribed so you don't miss out on that one. So thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Leave your comments down below. We'll continue our conversation down there. See you next time. Peace.